Hey guys, welcome to another weekend of plant things where it's not really pre-planned, we just go with the flow. So it is Friday, it's been a very long work week and I came in here to my plant room just to be with my plants because I had a very plantless week. So I wanted to just be in here and just look at my plants and touch my plants and just see who's growing and check on rooting progress and stuff. So I thought I'd just turn on the camera and we could do it together. I also do need to do some pest treatment, pest inspection. So basically we're just here to not make a mess and just chill. But I also wanted to show off some like new growth on some of my plants that I'm very excited about and like kind of current favorites. I don't have enough to warrant a full video and also those videos tend to be quite short and I know you guys have been wanting the longer videos so I thought I'd just work that into this video. So I'm planning basically to be filming today, tomorrow and Sunday and get you guys a really nice long video and also at the same time tackle some plant chores, just just chores in general that need to be done. One thing I do know for sure though is that Sunday is the Tropicals pop-up at Northwood Tropicals. It's actually happening today and tomorrow as well but um, Charmaine and I can't make it there until Sunday because we, we got we just got a lot going on right now. So we're only going to be there for the last day of the pop-up and the last day is actually when Lauren's going to go live on Instagram to sell all the plants that didn't sell at the pop-up and be able to ship them out across Canada. So that'll be really exciting. If you've ever watched like a live sale from Equigenera or Tropicals, that's kind of like what we're trying to kind of mimic. It's gonna be our first time doing a live sale like that. And, and Lauren's got plenty of experience watching the, the live sales. Like me and Charmaine don't really have that much experience. We're just gonna help where we can, but basically we're just there to, there to have a good time. So that Sunday, um, today we're just we're just we're just being with the plants. Tomorrow, I think, is when we're gonna get a little bit more hands-on. Um, I have a bunch of plant chores, like I said. I have some repotting I need to do. I have some chopping I need to do. And then in about an hour, um, my boyfriend will be home from work, and we're gonna go out for dinner. So we're just easing into this video, nice and slow. And if you hear um, snorting in the background, that is Huxley. It's not farting. So while I talk to you guys, I'm just gonna be doing some spider mite treatment because um, I found spider mites. I mean, it's no surprise that I found more spider mites on this shelf right here and I'm trying to do my best to like spray and wipe down the leaves as often as possible, but like it's freaking gloriosum. Do you see, do you see this like infestation down here at the bottom? I'm just spraying all the plants down with Safer's Endol. I don't really have a better solution right now. Um, and I'm using like a cotton wipe like a facial cotton wipe because just a little less abrasive than paper towel. So anyways, um, you guys know that I'm working one day a week at Northwood Tropicals. Well, not one day a week. For the last, I've, I was working a couple days a week for a while. And then um, when I took on a consulting client, which I, I don't know if I really super updated you guys on, but I have a client right now that I'm helping basically to set up a lot of processes for their coffee shop and they're opening a brand new location. So I have experience um, opening coffee shops and all the work that that entails. Um, it's their first time. So I'm kind of helping them just to manage that whole project and make sure that everything is running smoothly and the team is trained well and they got everything they need and set up accounts and set up set up like inventory, all the all the processes and stuff, just all, every single detail you could possibly imagine um, for opening a coffee shop, I'm, I'm helping them do. So, well, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, so when I took on that client is when I had to cut down one day a week from North of Tropicals. And so I'm working there one day a week right now. Although I think I'm going to be picking up a second client in the near future, not nothing as intense as this one, like opening a coffee shop, but it will take up some time. So anyway, this week I was there yesterday and I was there to help unpack all the plants that arrived for the pop-up. So the plants arrived and I'm pulling off sheaths. Um, the plants arrived and there was like, I think seven boxes to unpack. The, the plants that were like directly being shipped off to other parts of Canada already went. So the only thing remaining was the stuff that was like staying in Vancouver. So Lauren, um, this is so yellow. 
It looks like pea stain. Why was this so yellow? Is that the EFN that was so yellow? That's weird. That's weird. Oh, I better I better water you too while we're at it. I don't know if you can tell my brain is very um, full and preoccupied right now. Oh yeah, so everything so everything that was at the shop was everything that was staying in Vancouver. So Lauren kind of is trying a new method for the pop-ups. I'm working on my scalp room, by the way. This thing has not put out a leaf in so long. It's just been flowering nonstop. I repotted it over Christmas into like a bigger pot because um, it was drying out like every three days <laughs> and it just kept toppling over. So I put it into like a denser soil mix and it just kept flowering. Like you can see where I chopped off the spent flowers. Like it was just flowering over and over and over again, which is probably a sign that it's not very happy, but I, I bet you it probably has some spider mites, even though it's not showing spider mite damage. Okay, so like I was saying, Lauren is trying a new um, new approach to pop-ups because she wants a little bit more, a little bit more control over what comes in. Um, she wants to make sure that she's getting like really fun and exciting stuff. So she ended up buying a lot of stuff from the live sales because that way she could pick, like hand pick the specific specimens that were coming in. So she bought like hella plants from the live sale and then um, not all of them are her own to keep, but she is keeping a good amount for herself. And then, I'm sorry, you can't even see the plant right now. She's keeping a good amount for herself and um, this way she was able to get, like you know how sometimes they'll be selling stuff that's like a little bit unusual, right? So like um, a crystallinum with like crazy amount of silver. Uh, I'll pop a little photo here of one of the ones that she picked. I think that like just looking at the plants that we unboxed, of course like a lot of it is just like standard stuff, like standard forget eyes or like standard um, gloriosums, but um, there are a lot of more interesting stuff sprinkled throughout so I think this was like a really good call on her end just to make sure that there's like continued interest in these pop-ups because so much work goes into putting on these events like I can't tell you how much I was sweating yesterday in the heat and unpacking those boxes get everything priced get everything cleaned up some things needed to be repotted and then like cleaning the shop getting like the things covered up that needed to be covered up because um, the, the the sale is taking place inside her, her her warehouse part that you might see like in the back it's not the front shop part all of that work it, it's not very much when when the venue is very big and very established with a lot of staff but with such a just a small team that lauren has and it, it does feel like quite a lot of work and a lot of rejigging of the space so it's nice to have plants there that are just a little bit more special than what they just send out as like the default kind of plants. In a perfect world, I would have filmed yesterday when we were unboxing all the plants, but there was just no way. Like I had so much to do, not I had, we all had so much to do. And I I was feeling, <laughs> I was feeling like a lot of pressure because this is the first time I've ever set up for an event like this. If I had tried to film, it would have made everything take twice as long. So unfortunately I didn't get to film any of the the unboxing process, but maybe one day in the future, like with another pop-up, maybe I'll help um, Lauren set up and, and film that again. And you seem very thirsty. If you can see how the, the leaves are kind of like, they're hanging downwards a little bit. They're not super droopy, but they are definitely like, 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 you know, like, get you topped up with water. I see it, I have another plant in front of me here that is really freaking thirsty. Look at him. He's so sad. He's so cute and so sad at the same time. Um, the, the leaves are all already like facing downwards to begin with, but you can really see like there's, there's a lot of um, flop there and it weighs nothing. Um, the flower, oh, why aren't you pulling off? Okay, I guess you're not pulling off. I actually pollinated my very like magnificum leaning crystal mag with this because this one has been like so black and so cute and it's very, very, very peltate. Sometimes when you get forgetty eyes, they have a little bit of a sinus and that might be an indicator that it's maybe not pure forgetty eye. And certainly like it's very plausible that 
pure forgetty eye doesn't really super exist in cultivation but there are ones that are like super super round like every leaf is very peltate so i've been really enjoying this forgetty eye despite um underwatering it ever since i started using mother lights and getting this under brighter lights it's been getting blacker which really goes against like what we know about how less light usually results in more chlorophyll production and therefore the, the leaves and a lot of aeroids that we're growing end up being darker but for some reason all of my forgetty eyes there that are on that shelf so exactly where my my pointer finger is right now so it's under Barina lights on top and it has mother lights pointing forwards at it and all all of my forgetty eyes are very black i'll show you other ones in just a second they're definitely darker now than before before they got in those lighting conditions like this very sad leaf you can see um it hasn't started really to yellow yet um in the center but you can see that it's not quite as black as these i hope i'm making sense i'm gonna give it a quick quick end all spritz down even though i don't really see spider mites on it but since it's so dehydrated it's definitely susceptible to a pest attack i just cannot wait until spider mites are not in my life anymore maybe i'll show this to you again tomorrow when this has had time to like soak up the water and show you a less droopy version of this plant another forgetty eye on that shelf that is very very thirsty listen to the listen to the soil but look how dark it is this was certainly not this dark and this contrasty like the veins were not this neon and it looks very sad right now because it's dealing with spider mites but in that shelf it went way darker than it used to be under lower lights and also something i'm noticing is that um i'm getting a lot more flowers when I first got my mother lights and I made a video about them, somebody messaged me on Instagram and said that like <laughs> their their mother lights is like the sexy time lights because everything was flowering for her. She just said that like all her anthuriums just started flowering like crazy. But this one is flowering, that other one you just saw was flowering, my crystal black is flowering, my pendants or like Friedrich Sally eyes flowering. It flowered two times in a row. I didn't think that I was underwatering this shelf so severely. I guess I have been actually way more busy than I thought. Here's another crazy forgetty eye. <laughs> okay, he's very black. Like he's super, super black. He looks nothing like what he looked like when I got him. So when I first got him, it was like, I'll pop a photo here of Charmaine's, which I show all the time. Um, this this plant no longer is with us. May he rest in peace. But we imported these in 2020 at the same time from Echogenera. And um, this was just listed as like forgetty eye, nothing special. And they all came in like very dark, very bullate with these um, very minimal green veining and like zero silver. So that's pretty much what my plant looked like. Although mine didn't get as dark as hers. Now it's super dark, like almost black, but the veins are so neon. They are not silver, but they are super, super green, which very much confuses me. And it's also flowering. It is receptive. If you want to see what a receptive info looks like. This one actually is grossing me out right now. This one is very much Usually, usually inflows don't trigger my trypophobia, but the way that that one looked was just way too uniform and perfect and well, I might have to cut it off because it's really bothering me. And this one is freaking dry as a bone too. If I uncurl his leaf, you can see how weird that shape is. Like that forehead is just so huge. Yeah, so I just thought it was really interesting how black my forgetty eyes are getting under higher light no bleaching no nothing who should i work on next this plant seems fine like spider mite wise um and it seems it seems pretty perky although he is super super dry this is my alocasia i always forget the botanical name but it, it's called the green shield this new leaf well it's not even that new anymore but this leaf is so long i really really like it i got this over Christmas from from uh, Lauren I think it was like five dollars or something you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little 
a little box here so you can actually see the plants that I'm wiping down. So tonight, after dinner, we're finally going to be booking our, our flights for the summer. Um, at the end of June, we're going to go away to the UK and visit my boyfriend's family and all his friends. And um, here's, here's where I need your guys' help. So the reason why I've been doing so many vlogs and stuff like that lately is because I just really don't know what to film. And maybe that's just exactly what you guys want to see. I don't know. But um, I'm going to pin a comment that is going to ask for what you would most like to see on you plan to YouTube from me specifically because um, I think I just I just am not that inspired. I feel I feel like I'm just showing you guys the same plants over and over and over again and telling you the same exact information and I'm just kind of at a loss as to like what kind of videos to make because at some point you feel like you've exhausted everything you have to say about plants you know so if you guys have any any suggestions or just like what what are your favorite kinds of plant videos to to watch then I can be a little bit more efficient in what I'm making and creating because when I when I know exactly what I'm going to film then I get more motivated to actually film it and I have to build up extra videos for when I'm gone because I'll be gone for like three weeks. I think I need to build up like at least three to four extra videos in a queue before I leave so I don't um, don't miss any upload days. Okay next one. This is my crystal black. It's putting out a really pretty leaf right now, which I'm petrified of getting eaten by spider mites. Uh, I see a little bit of speckling. I am so freaking annoyed. I love, I really, really love this plant and I just would love for spider mites to leave him alone. I just want pretty crystal black leaves. I think crystallinum is such an underrated Philodendron. <laughs> Crystallinum is such an underrated anthurium because I, I think I think because there are so many like not so pretty crystallinum hybrids that they're marketing as crystallinum. So I think people it really waters down the true beauty of this plant. Not that this is like necessarily a pure crystallinum, but to me this is pretty much like classic, classic crystallinum. They don't get the respect that they deserve in the plant community. I think they're just kind of marketed as like an easy anthurium that you kind of like start out with, but then you graduate onto like the better stuff later down the road. It just deserves better. Also it's flowering. One thing I'm trying to get better at is actually collecting pollen and storing it. I get super lazy about it because I'm like, oh, I'll just do it next time, I'll do it next time, and then I don't. But when I need pollen, I wanna be able to like pick from, from whatever pollen I have, or like when somebody else wants pollen, I wanna be able to just give them some. I think crystal black would be a nice one to, to uh, hybridize with something else, or even like just self it. I could really probably easily self this because this is at the age now where like every leaf it flowers. I'm tired of wiping leaves down. The theme of tonight is I'm only here to have a good time. So let's look at some plant growth. I'm going to show you guys some of like my favorite leaves right now. My most exciting new growths. Starting with, oh god you're thirsty too. <laughs> okay before I show this to you I'm going to put in a photo here of what this plant looked like for a really long time. I'll put a little date stamp on it so you can see like what it looked like then. My Anthurium with Lingerai. Look at this new leaf. It's so good. It's so big and strong and flat and it didn't get warped. I've been obsessing over this leaf for I don't even know how long it's been growing for but isn't it so perfect? I'm just astounded that it's it's decided to put out such good growth for me because I found this plant really hard to get foliage growth out of and even when I got foliage growth I would they would come out like really like curly and like just warped on the sides if I can show you like older growth came out like this it would just harden off like this and this would happen this one happened somewhat recently as well like this leaf here it's not I mean it is thirsty right now but it would do this 
even if it wasn't thirsty. Like it, it would never uncurl when it got watered. It really wasn't until I got it into tree fern did it root like crazy and start growing much faster. Um, the last time I showed this to you, it had a flower <laughs> and that flower aborted and died. So sad. The spadex never even emerged from the spade. Like it was just, um, it was just inside the sheath and then it turned orange and then I was like, crap, it's dying. So it died. I didn't even see if it would develop into a corkscrew. By the way, in that video, I was like, um, does it come out like a corkscrew? Or like, can you tell that it's going to be a corkscrew even when it's inside the space? Does it already look curly? And then Amanda messaged me privately and just said, it looked like just straight. And when it emerges, the spadex will start to get longer and longer and start to curl as it gets bigger. So if anyone was asking themselves the same thing, <laughs> that's the answer. Cause I was looking up when lingerite inflows and I couldn't ever find one, a picture of one before the spadex emerges. It's always like a fully emerged spadex. But yeah, like um, just to give you a sense of how big the leaf is, it's almost the length of my arm, almost. And I recently moved it so that it would like face one way. <laughs> you can see the leaves kind of like all are, are very confused of where the light is. It was after this leaf. So this leaf is now facing a light almost head on. So hopefully it will start to look a little bit more balanced, but this is definitely like my most exciting leaf at the moment. Part of why I was so impressed with this is because I chopped it a few months ago, so I chopped a lot of the roots off. I gave this little bottom cutting to Charmaine. I was really expecting it to take a reduction in size after I chopped it, but it just kept sizing up more and more. So like after the chop, this was the first leaf that grew, which is like a good size. And then this one is even bigger. It's just freaking magnificent. And I don't really know what kind of form this when lingerize, because when lingerize is super variable. So if you've ever seen like a NSC when lingerize, like, not as glossy and it has a lot more ripples down the front. This one, if, if you can see like a fully hardened leaf, like how rigid and waxy it is, there's no like fluidity to it at all. It's very, very waxy Hoya like almost. Just to give you a close up on that texture, like it's very shiny for a Windlingeri. Not that I've seen so many Windlingeris in person. The only other one I've seen is Charmaine's that she got from Amanda, which is from J. Vanini. That's the only other wind I've ever seen in person, but it was not this like kind of glossy finish. Okay, I haven't been watching this leaf for the last few few days. Um, the last time I looked at this plant, the leaf was like this big. Look how big it's gotten. And look how big compared to the last leaf. This is my Anthurium Carib Queen, Dress Lurai by Rigolosum. My emails are going off. I have like 125 emails in my inbox and that's from like yesterday and today. I'm just, I'm just gonna silence, silence my phone. Cause I can ignore it in the moment, but when I'm editing, all I hear is like, -doom, -doom. yeah, so, so this is Dress the Ride by Rigolosum. I think I've got it in the right order. And this is of course from Amanda and it's humongous. When I first, when we first got it, it was just a leafless stick. And the first leaf that came out was this teeny little guy. And I think this was in August. So it's actually quite big now. And the exciting thing is it's quite small, I guess, like as an anthurium, it's quite small, but it's already doing catafils. You can see that this leaf came out of a catafil, which is an indication that it is getting closer to flowering size, which it doesn't even look that big. So I think I'm gonna get this into a bigger pot soon. You can kind of see like the roots are filling out and also there's a lot of stem. There are roots, like roots that came out of the stem that extended into the substrate. So this one and this one should, sh there should be enough um, root underneath the substrate to sustain this plant if I were to chop it because then I can get some plants over to Charmaine. But look how beautiful and symmetrical this leaf is. And I don't know if the camera can pick up the texture, but it's not glossy, nor is it velvety. It's got a really pretty like glittery sheen. I think it's kind of similar in texture to like a Lux Hybrid. Like a Lux Hybrid with something velvety. It's kind of got that in between because it is like a glossy plant hybridized with a a, a velvety plant. I really didn't think I was going to love this plant as much as I do 
but I really, really do love this blend. Such a cutie. This, the leaf shape is everything. Look at those ears, those little overlapping ears. I'm a, such a huge sucker for tall lobes on anthuriums, which is probably why I love that the Dark Phoenix. The Dark Phoenix that has really, really tall bunny ears, they're just my favorite. I finally have a new leaf coming in on my Carla Bevep. The new leaf is looking super delicious. It's reading bronzy and brownish on the viewfinder, but in person it's a lot more like pink in the veins. And I guess it's pretty bronzy in the leaf, but it's, it definitely has more pink in person. This plant hasn't grown a leaf in quite some time. I'm not really sure why. I think it just didn't quite have as much light. So it used to live up here on this top shelf, like pretty much like right here, but it was getting too much shade from above. So I put it here and then I recently got another light here. So all the lights, all the lights, all the plants here on this level are getting more light than they used to. And it pretty much immediately started to like push a leaf out when it got under more light. My original approach in putting it up top here and getting giving it less light was to make sure that it would stay super dark but i actually think like based on you know my experience with some of like my other plants like the forgetty eye more more light can have kind of the opposite effect and have like more vibrant colors then i mean i kind of already knew that for emergent leaves but i didn't really know that it could result in darker foliage like darker hardened foliage so i'm just kind of like experimenting for myself this is probably something I could just research and find out the answers to on Facebook, but I kind of just want to like experiment on my own. So I'm giving this more light. And if this leaf hardens off darker than the others, then we know that it's a higher light thing. Okay, so do you guys remember that I got a green form Ace of Spades from Lauren? It's still in freaking moss. So when I first got it from Lauren, it was like this leaf. This leaf was like coming out and it was it was really small and I showed it on camera and I was like, I'm not gonna disturb it because I took it out of her shop because it used to live under a dome. So it was in 100% humidity. So I'm putting it into my tent, lower humidity. It's been like moved around. It was repotted from like a big pot into this cup to transport. And then I was like, I'm just gonna let it recover and establish and then once this leaf hardens, I'm going to get it out of moss into like either tree fern or pond or something. <sighs> Unfortunately, it immediately after this leaf came out, it started to push this leaf. So I was like, I, I don't really want to mess with it while it's growing a leaf. So hopefully it pauses a little bit after this leaf. If not, like I'm gonna repot it either way. I don't want it to root into moss. But look at this new leaf. Well, first of all, wait, let me back up. Oh, the exposure is going crazy. This leaf hardened off so nice and dark and just really, it developed a lot nicer than I expected it to because it, as a reminder, this basically had barely any roots. It was a chop, it was a, it was a, it was a defensive move on Lauren's part to like chop up her plant because I think she found root rot on it. So she, for insurance, she chopped it into a few pieces and one of these pieces went to me. So I really wasn't expecting it to grow so quickly with like no root growth, but that's anthuriums for you. The second leaf, it's so freaking stunning and I'm actually quite impressed with how much bigger it got and it's still like you can see how floppy it is. But, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And I just noticed, I just, just, just noticed an air, a root come out. There is a pink root sticking straight out. I think I'm actually gonna get him into pond. So backstory, you guys won't know this, Lauren has the mother plant at her shop, which has a bigger leaf. And that one we potted, it used to be, I believe in soil or moss, one of those two. We potted it into tree fern because we know tree fern to be very good at promoting like healthy and fast root growth. However, like it's been like a month and still no roots, not no visible roots on the side of the, the pot. So I'm thinking to get it into pond instead, just so we can see like which substrate works better. Or I'm thinking possibly a tree fern soil mix. I just don't want it to, I just want to be able to grow this long term in, in like one substrate. So it's either going to be pond or tree fern soil because tree fern soil, holy crap, the anthuriums are loving that. I've said that a million times. Okay, so I, I think I'm going to head out to dinner fairly soon. I just wanted to show you guys some updates to like recent repots, like how the plants are like faring, how are they rooting and stuff like that. Okay, so I think this was like 
a month ago or so, I chopped up my Dark Phoenix. I chopped it, uh, I chopped like three pieces off of it and this is the top cutting that I kept for myself. I was super concerned that it was gonna die. Not that I didn't think it was a hardy plant, but after I had chopped it, I noticed that the leaves were getting very like thin, like it lost a lot of water very, very quickly. So I was like, oh, this is it. This is it. I'm gonna have to rehab this plant. It's gonna die back. It's just gonna be a stump. But luckily, it decided it was gonna be the queen of the world that it is. Sorry, Huxley's just oh, Huxley's just getting comfortable behind the camera. As expected, because it freaking loves pond, it rooted like crazy. It literally started to root the very next day. Like it started to, I started to see like these little tiny like secondary roots popping off the main roots, but look how much it has rooted. I don't really remember how long it's been, but it's been a few weeks, let's say, like three to four weeks. I mean, all all these fuzzy white roots you can see are new. I don't really know why there are some pond haters out there. Sometimes when I'm showing like my plants that are like struggling or like, you know, are, are kind of ugly, I <laughs> sometimes I'll get comments like, it's because of the pond or like, um, like stop using pond or it's because of the lack of organic material in the substrate like it, it's obviously not true i wouldn't use pond on everything if i wasn't getting good growth like that would be so counterintuitive to like keep buying this expensive substrate and using it on my plants if i wasn't getting good results you know what i mean like i'm not like a soilless grower like purely but i know that some plants really respond super well to pond. Anthuriums are definitely one of those plants and the dark phoenix specifically like just adores being in pond. It grows so fast. Actually you can see that it's popping a leaf already. So this happened like maybe a couple of weeks after the chop. I have two props left of this plant. One one like the, the bottom stump I've already sold but I also have this like leafless stump which I actually don't think is gonna do anything but this is like the stem from the mother plant. So this is like what my plant grew out of and that was uh, propagated by the original grower. Yeah, like the root hasn't died. The root is still green. I better give it some water. But nothing is pushing at the moment. It's still firm, but I just don't know that there's definitely an auxiliary bud there. So I'm just gonna keep it here and see. I might actually just put a little dome cup over it. I just, I was hesitating on putting a cup over top and just blasting the humidity because I really didn't want that whole thing to just turn into mush and die. And then this cup. <gasps> oh my gosh, Lauren, if you're watching, this is your cutting. This is the cutting that I've reserved for Lauren. This was the two leafer, so this is one leaf. This is the other leaf. And I was just like, I know the chances of there being a, an axillary bud on this is quite high, but I was like, because I can't see the axillary buds, I, I, in my mind, I was like, there's also equally a good chance that I chopped the axillary buds off on both sides of the stem, so I left this with nothing. It did root, so you can see one right there. Nice fuzzy root coming down here. So that part is fine, but it wasn't really popping growth, but look. We've got a growth point right there. So I told Lauren she can't have this plant until I can verify that it is definitely going to grow and it is growing. So I'm very relieved. I'm super, super, super relieved. So that's gonna go to Lauren. I think I'm gonna grow this leaf out and then, and then pass that on to her. Another fairly recent repot. I think this was like three, three videos ago. I repotted a lot of my, my seedling anthuriums, which aren't really like seedlings anymore. So this one is my Magnificum by Ace of Spades, which has small, much smaller leaves than its like sibling from the same seed batch. But it immediately put out this leaf right after the repot, which is great. And we got a lot of nice root growth here. This is probably like three weeks worth of root growth. So it's doing really well and I'm very glad that this like very AC looking shape is continuing and look at that color, it's so pretty. You also need some water. And then that plant sibling, look at this humongous leaf. I mean, maybe it doesn't look that humongous. Look at next to my hand and next to 
next to this plant. <laughs> Look how much bigger it is. They were germinated at the same time exact same seed batch and look how much bigger this one is every time i repotted one i also repotted the other so they got like graduated into bigger vessels at the same time they were grown in pond the whole time they live next to each other in tent and this just goes to show like how variable one seed batch can be but this leaf had just emerged when i repotted that so just wanted to show you guys how that leaf turned out a lot of root rot is happening this one had a lot more roots than the other ones and they basically are all rotting but simultaneously lots of lots of healthy root growth you see this like this pinky guy here pinky guy here some healthy ones here if the plant starts to decline or i can see like more rot i might be more um motivated to repot him again but right now he's just not a huge priority he seems relatively happy and the growth is the growth is growing okay very last update the burly marks flame that me and charmaine are sharing is ready to be chopped which i will do this tomorrow so i was saying in my last last video that i got it into higher light just to get it to root faster and it worked we got roots here and here and then on the top it's gonna be kind of hard to show you uh, new roots here. I think if I were to ask Charmaine, she's gonna be like, mm, maybe we should wait a little bit longer, but I, I think she needs to have this in her care. So tomorrow, we're gonna chop it in half and kind of reposition the plants and get them onto poles. So the higher light definitely, definitely did wonders. All right, well, we successfully didn't make a mess filming in the plant room, so that's great for me. I'm going to finish watering this room and it just in general have a very peaceful Friday night. No emails, no editing, no filming. Just chill out with my, my Netflix and my phone games. I am very excited. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. So today is Saturday. I don't know why my voice sounds like I just woke up. I've been awake for a few hours now. I've gotten ready for the day. I've done my hair and makeup but I'm like still in my pajamas. <laughs> I'm waiting for my boyfriend to come home so we can go out and run some errands. And really it's not super important errands, it's more like today's the only day that we have time to like actually spend together because tomorrow I'm going to NST for the pop-up. While I'm waiting for him to get home, I thought I'd just tackle one plant chore that's that's been on the to-do list for many months and it's my Hoya cabinet, which you can see right behind me. I'm gonna show you guys in a second, but the, the Hoya cabinet is just the kind of a sealed box that I open to water and it gets closed right after because the sheer mess of vines really, really stresses me out. And I'm pretty sure that like, if I don't deal with this in the next two weeks, Charmaine and Jing are gonna disown me as friends. So I'm going to like, just get in there and just hack off all the growth um, if there's any cute cuttings that i could sell I'll, I'll sell those i just need to kind of cut things back so i can appreciate that cabinet again i've kind of like mentally shut down towards hoyas like other than like the ones that are kind of easy to maintain like the linearis and the compacta but anything that really vines a lot um, has been stressing me out so we're gonna actually deal with it now before i head out for the day actually right now i'm gonna show you footage from about a year ago when i first set up this cabinet and i was like i can't wait for this to fill out and like it kind of filled out a lot quicker than i expected and then beyond <laughs> And then I also need to probably pull out some plants that desperately need repotting or are maybe dead. So I'm gonna show you the state of the cabinet right now and then I'll probably just time-lapse um, the whole hacking process. So here we go. All right, here is the cabinet. Um, you know, it could be worse, I guess, but it definitely could be better. So that's what it looks like right now before I open up the doors. I really haven't changed or added many plants in the last six months or so. So it's just kind of plants growing all around each other. So I'm gonna just start at the top corner here. This plant, well, it was purchased as a Macrophylla Splash. Sorry, the lighting is awful, but it looks like that. Uh, so it's at the very top of the cabinet, but the plant is actually down here, right here. So the pot is right here. So it's vined all the way to the top and I didn't even notice this growing so this is definitely going to get cut back and then next to it is a um, hoya calistophylla um so that's vined here the, right here 
is a whole kind of intertwined mess. There's a spider that lives in here as well. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Um, and then over here is a obovada. Obovada's kind of little splashy one. This is, oh my gosh, I always forget the name. This was from Lauren. It is, it was a cutting of her plants, Hoya erythrina, I think. And then this, this must be, yeah, this one must be this plant down here, which is the Hoya valmayoriana, Hoya pachiclata that has grown from down here to here and it's over here and it's, it's back there too. Okay, that's not really focused. You can see how disgusting. Oh my gosh, that spider web. The spiders in this house make the ugliest webs. And I, like, if I left any corner unvacuumed for like a week, it's gonna be full of cobwebs. But that's the Hoya Loi province. Hoya SPH here. Um, it's grown quite a bit. This is the original leaf in and all its glory. Hoya Chicken Farm which finally started growing. Oh my gosh, these vines are all falling out. I'm not gonna go through every single plant in here, but this is a Hoya Velosa, one of my favorites. Um, Hoya Clemenciorum Thailand. This one I actually want to take a cutting of and propagate and duplicate. But yeah, that's the, just a lot of vines that went up to the top and they're intertwined. There's a cobweb, <laughs> it looks disgusting. Down here is another mess of vines. Uh, my Nicholsonia New Guinea ghost is, I think it's dying. Okay, I think my boyfriend just pulled up on the driveway. Hux? <laughs> okay, that was Huxley freaking out. So this is a Hoya SP Germany, which I really, really like. Um, it's actually been growing quite a lot. This is a cutting I wanna take. That's super pretty. I mean, this is to, to propagate and like gift or sell in the vine. What well, goes all the way up there. All right, so I'm just gonna set you up on the tripod and we're going to just get hacking away because my boyfriend just got home. I need to sneeze. <coughs> I've been very sneezy today. I'm gonna put the cuttings into probably like a bowl or something just so they're not like milking all over the place. So um, here we go. Okay, so the next section is going to be all voiceover because I'm still very uncomfortable filming with anyone other than Charmaine. So this is the bowl of cuttings, which is way more than I expected. And I pulled my Hoya Hypolasia, which sadly died, but it's the only uh, casualty, which is good. But once it's in a bowl, it just kind of looks like a lot. Um, and I also wanted to show you my Hoya Callistophila flower. I think it's Callistophila. And just generally how much brighter it looks in the cabinet with so much less foliage and less shade. Um, but anyway, we're gonna come back to the Hoyas after I take you on a little adventure to Vandula Farms 
for some goodies for my garden. So we came here to grab more creeping thyme for my, for my front yard because last time I didn't get enough and I just wanted to fill in more gaps so it can just kind of spread a little bit faster. So I just want to show you some cute things that we saw there. We spontaneously decided just to put together a like a pot of blooms for the pollinators just a mix of annuals that we thought were cute like I really like purples and he really likes oranges so we did a purple orange pot but I'll show you all that at the end so for now let's just look at some flowers and enjoy the music It's actually almost dinner time. Um, I got back from Vandula a lot later than I was expecting. I always have such a good time there, and I'm not even just saying this because like I consider them friends of ours, but their plants are so healthy all the time. It's always just such such a nice time to be there because it, you're just everything just is lush and healthy, and you're not like sifting. Huxley just farted. It's it just such a stark contrast to like any other garden center. Like for example, if you go to like Lowe's or Home Depot and you're just sifting through the dying plants to get to the nice ones. Yeah, their standards are so high. And um, I didn't show this, but I ended up getting another pie because the peach pie that I got last time, it's long gone. So I, I got a strawberry rhubarb pie. Um, I got a watermelon and just some goodies to eat at home. So I'm gonna give myself an hour here with you guys before I'm gonna go make dinner because my stomach is like rumbling again. <laughs> what else is new? So I have my Hoya salad here. Oh gosh, I don't know what the frick I'm gonna do with this. I don't even have vessels to plant these in. So I honestly feel like I'm just gonna chop them up to like the cuttings that I think I would either pot up for myself or sell or bring to Lauren even though she has no room for more Hoyas, but I think maybe she could sell them on her website, maybe. Yeah, I, I really don't know. I'm just gonna play it by ear, but I wanna chop these up. And then um, we're gonna chop up the Monstera Burley Marks Flame, and I'm going to, I'm gonna get mine onto a pole. And I don't know if Charmaine wants to grow her cutting in this cup for any longer than like a couple weeks. So I'm not gonna get hers onto a moss pole, or like, not a moss pole, I'm gonna make a like a tree fern fibery pole for me and then I'm just gonna get hers onto like a stake, I think, but try not to like disturb it as much as possible because I think it was like a week, one to two weeks ago, I had to get it um, out of the, the cups and like cut off a bunch of rot. So I want to like disturb the roots as, as little as possible because I feel like one wrong move, I'm gonna lose all the roots again. All those roots that like I, I work so hard to get growing. So yeah, that's the plan. I think that's going to take up an hour easily. So, oh yeah, but also I was gonna show you guys the forgetty eye after, after getting a good drink. I need to, I need to cut off. This dead inflow is not coming off by pulling. So we're gonna cut it off, but I pretty much just wanted to show you that it is looking much better, much perkier. Nice and bouncy after a good water. I don't know that you can super see what I'm doing, but since it's not like a repot per se, 
Maybe this can work. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is a very thirsty Hoya Vitellinoides. And the, this top bit is dead. That, that bit of vine is dead. So we're gonna chop you off. And I'm gonna actually just stick this in water because I don't know if you can see, but it is kind of thirsty. The leaves are quite soft. I also have another cutting of this plant which looks really different. And this is lower light and this is higher light. So I, I don't know if I finished my thought, but I'm gonna just water root everything or stick it in water until I have a plan. I thought it was gonna be a good idea to chop down the cabinet today, but I'm more stressed now that I've kind of like opened Pandora's box on the Hoya cabinet. This is so cute though, this Velosa. I'm gonna cut, cut and sort, and then we'll, we'll take stock of what we have. This has been one of my favorite Hoyas, and it grows really fast. As you can see, I have more here, Um, I think back on like last year and how into Hoyas I was and I've been kind of backing off of Hoyas for a while. I would say probably since end of summer, beginning of fall of last year. So it's been at least six months where I've really not been like, I've been kind of avoiding Hoyas and I definitely can still appreciate appreciate a nice Hoya leaf, but uh, what am I trying to say? I definitely know that I can go through phases of, you know, liking a particular genus more than others and being particularly fi fixated on a genus. But this is actually really nice. Look at this cutting. This is Espiace. Yeah, I, I definitely go through phases, like right now I'm more, more fixated on Anthuriums and I've definitely been in an anthurium heavy phase before as well, but it's, it's a long time for Hoyas for me. So I have contemplated converting that cabinet into something else, but I just know that it's too small of a space for aeroids. So I, I think it has to kind of stay as a Hoya cabinet because it would just be a constant revolving door of aeroids outgrowing that space and then having to move them out and swap it out with something smaller. And I don't always have like a small plant to put in something so small. It's really just like the depth of the cabinet. Like I barely have enough space in my, in my exos. This cutting is so freaking cute. This one that I'm actually gonna keep and pot up. Um, I wanna have like a nice full pot like this of like variegated ovovada. The mother plant that this came off of is, was not very nice. Those were like the import leaves. So these are the, the leaves that I grew myself. And I just think it's so cute. Um, I'm gonna actually do this off camera because I don't, I don't have any vessels. So I'm gonna have to like, I don't know, like scrounge around the house for, for glass vessels. I bought so many and they just disappeared like that. <laughs> this patchy clada is actually ridiculous. Like, look at the aerial roots on this thing. It's kind of disturbing, but this is such a cute plant. How am I gonna cut this though? Do I only have one cutting of this? Yeah. Okay, maybe I can get two cuttings from this. And then, yeah, no, I'm, I'm cutting this off. Sorry, I don't want it. <laughs> so we can get like another pot like, like this. That would be quite cute. Or maybe I'll just do one for myself and then like sell the other one, maybe. What are you? Oh yeah, this is SP Germany, which is a very nice Hoya. This leaf is quite nice. I have another cutting that's actually a lot nicer. Where is it? Here. I think this one, this one should, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do like a fresh cuttings purge on, I was gonna say Instagram, on Facebook. I guess I'll keep this and just like Velcro, Velcro tie it like this. This was such a nice Hoya. This one came from Jing as did most of my Hoyas. This is probably like the best cutting I have. This one is quite a cutie, but it was vining like crazy. This is like a Carnosa. It's a splashy Carnosa. I think this actually grew from a reverted Wilbur Graves, if I recall correctly. So it was a proper Wilbur Graves. And now it's like a very small leaf, very freckly Carnosa, which is super cute. I'm going to chop off 
and discard, sorry, a bunch of vine. Aw, these two together are so cute. And then I guess I'll leave this vine on because there is a leaf here which probably won't survive, but I'll just leave that on. I'm running out of space. Uh, Vitellinoides, not Vitellinoides, why do I always want to call this Vitellinoides? Callistophila. Oh, there's a peduncle on it. Teeny tiny peduncle. Okay, I'll cut you like this. Yep, okay. The more cuttings I make, the more, the more stressed I am. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so my variegated obovada, I chopped this off, but there are two peduncles on this. Can you see? There's one and there's the other there. And I've never had this flower for me, but do I really care? I don't know if I care or if I kind of care because I think I should care, but this looks so stupid. There's a bunch of leaves that are like starting to form on it too. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know like how, is, is anything even gonna grow from it? <sighs> I'll keep it. Uh, we're getting near to the end. Okay, so this, I didn't actually need to chop this because this wasn't binding like crazy, but this is a Hoya Clemenciorum Thailand. So it's like darker with less like striking contrast divination than the Indo Clemenciorum that we see often. I actually took this cutting for somebody um, who shall remain nameless because they don't know that they're getting this cutting. This one I need to get immediately into water. This one is a another Hoya SP Tengamus. Is this the only one? This might be the only cutting of that. This is a new leaf and it's getting really floppy. So this is gonna go straight into water. Actually, everything is going into water. And then <laughs> this is like the giant, uh, formerly known as Macrophylla, but is now called Ceroac. These two freshies. This one is actually still, um, still floppy and can still get bigger, but I don't know that it'll get bigger now that I've chopped it. I guess I'll leave the vine on. <sighs> okay. Okay, I think I can get them into like a deli cup and just water root it. Where can I put this? I'll probably put this like on this shelf here, which gets a good amount of light and let them root while I be lazy about figuring out what to do with them. I don't know that I'm keeping any of these, to be honest, except for, except for the variegated obovada. So I'm gonna keep these. This one I'm not keeping, but I need to safeguard, so I'm going to put that in my pile. This one I don't necessarily want to keep because like the mother plant I still have and it's really nice, but I really like this cutting and I'm not super prepared to, to sell it, so I might keep this one. Because I really like how narrow the leaves are and this is like a really super pretty Hoya. It's not a super like thick waxy one, it's slightly on the thinner side and it got kind of nicely sun stressed. So I might put this in my pile. It's really like my kind of Hoya. Um, everything else I think I'm gonna sell slash get rid of. This shorty guy is like the Velosa. I can put in a smaller cup. At least then they're all together. So if I stare at this long enough, I might lose the will to get rid of it. I've got Hoya juice all over me. Now that the cabinet's so much less full of of vines and leaves, I can actually like get plants out of there and give it like a nice, good, deep clean, um, which will be nice. Oh God. I don't want to do this. I regret starting this project. have many regrets about <sighs> I don't even know what I regret because if I didn't do this then I would have a, a sealed Hoya cabinet that like I'd never I'm like too stressed to look at but at the same time now I have to deal with all these propagations <laughs> let's um let's abort Hoya mission and um, let's work on this Monstera but before I do I'm going to just uh, sterilize my my freaking emails. I'm gonna sterilize my shears, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. 
shears are clean. Okay, so before I cut the Monstera, I'm just gonna assemble my moss pole, which I probably should have done off camera, but. So this is the, the D-shaped moss pole from North Shore Tropicals. Hopefully I can keep the internose pretty short so I can keep it on this pole for a long time, but these poles stack, which is great. So I always thought it was like pretty, pretty straightforward how to assemble these poles, but um, I think some people will forget to crease like this part, like just the way that I did it here. And this makes it a lot easier to assemble. So if you're using these poles, make sure you are creasing them because you don't want it to be a circle, right? You want it to be a D shape. And there's like three like tightness levels you can put it on. I pretty much always go in the middle one. And you can obviously fill the pole first and then and then close it up. But I always prefer to close it first because this happens with my butter fingers. So I usually like slide them halfway in and then once they're in and like it's not going to pop open then I go back and click them and lock them in place. I was kind of contemplating doing a tree fern pole on it but I'm trying to make my tree fern last as long as possible so I also rinse some moss. So I'm thinking I'm going to do moss and tree fern maybe like 50-50. So I actually have way more moss than I actually need. So I'm gonna take some out. I'll just mix tree fern into it until, until it feels right. So the reason why I really like a tree fern pole is because the tree fern doesn't really like bind to the roots as much and it doesn't, it's not hard to get it off the roots. So later if I was to cut it or like disassemble the pole, you just have nicer roots in general and you don't have to like pull off a ton of moss and also the the benefit of tree fern is that it allows water to travel through the pole better when it's fully dry like you know how moss gets like, super hydrophobic and it just runs down the side so the tree fern is making this like kind of structure where the water can actually pass through the middle and rehydrate the moss better if you're using like pure tree fern or tree fern mixed with some like perlite and stuff then you can really just water the pole through even if it's like fully dry you can just water it through really easily the only problem is that it's very expensive i think i think i like this this is i would say this is probably roughly 50 50 because this is roughly double the volume of when i first started yeah i think i like this i'll do that so i'm gonna just like fill it maybe halfway and I always go from the bottom and just push upwards because like if you're pushing it rather than like dropping it from the bottom, then you're simultaneously like compacting the substrate a little bit as well, which you kind of have to do with tree fern. Otherwise it just like falls straight out the bottom. So yeah, so that's basically it. And I don't have to worry about like squishing down the top because it's already compacted from, from this direction. And later when I need to like fill up the pole again, I'll drop it in, but I'll just take like a bamboo stick and just tamp it down. So I think that's good for my pole. Now we're gonna do the chop. I think I'm gonna probably be growing it in this cup for the foreseeable future until like this really fills up with roots, which actually could be sooner than, than I think. Okay, so I'm gonna give Charmaine as much stem as possible on her side. So I'm gonna give her a chop right about good here so I wanted to put the bamboo stake in because this stem is gonna be kind of like elevated above the substrate because I don't I really don't want it to rot so I'm gonna just stick this bamboo stake in but avoiding this root so that root is there so I can put it put the bamboo stake like here and then just secure it with Velcro. So I need to like make sure that that end of the stem calluses nicely um, without, I don't think it super needs like um, hormones or sulfur powder or anything. I'm just going to like build up the substrate a tiny bit, but leave a bit of a gap there. So it, there's airflow. Cause if um, that stem rots, <laughs> I will never forgive myself. I feel like that feels pretty stable. 
I managed to miss that root entirely, so that's good. Okay, so that's her cutting. I can give this better light now that they're separated. I'm just realizing this pole is kind of big. Although it could work. It might work actually. There's nothing really for me to do other than just like add a little bit more substrate just to make sure that pole gets stabilized. I really want to get it out of this cup. So pretty much like as soon as this gets going and fills out the, the pot for the cup, I guess, um, I'm going to, I'm going to just like with as little root disturbance as possible, just get it transferred into like a nicer pot. So what I probably do is maybe continue if all goes well with the tree fern, I'll continue growing it in tree fern. If it does well, I don't really feel the need to get it into different substrate, but let's say for example i'm going to keep it in tree fern i'm just going to get it out trying to like keep the substrate on the roots as much as possible and to get it into a glass vessel and in the glass vessel i'll definitely have a like layer at the bottom just to make sure that i don't all over water the tree fern just need a bit of velcro i just want to get it like right flush up against the pole so when the the plant grows that fresh new um, growth with like more growth hormones in it will more readily root into the pole. Okay, they're done now. I had this planned as like a chop for today because I was gonna, I was planning to see Charmaine tomorrow to go to North Shore Tropicals, but oh my gosh, you guys, um, she's, she can't make it tomorrow or like I'm 99% sure she's not gonna make it tomorrow. If you guys follow her, you know that um, she, she just had dental surgery on Monday, so it just like at the beginning of this week she had her wisdom teeth extracted or a wisdom tooth extracted that was kind of growing like into like sideways. So long story short, it's infected and she feels so sick. Um, like obviously a lot of pain here, but she can't make it tomorrow. I didn't want to give her her plant tomorrow, but um, it's not gonna happen, but at least I can hold on to it for like another week or until whenever I see her again and make sure that it continues rooting. Looking around this room, there's there's quite a bit of repotting that needs to be done. I'm just looking inside my tent right now. Um, I'm going to probably leave that for a future video. I think I'm going to leave it here for today. So tomorrow, um, I'm actually going to be driving up to NST by myself because Charmaine's not coming, um, but Jing will be there. I may need to get there around noon. As I think I mentioned earlier in this video, whatever doesn't sell at the pop-up is going to be um, sold live on Instagram, on uh, Lauren's Instagram. So by the time you see this, the, the live sale will be done. So I think I'll be there for a good few hours and I'll try to film as much as possible, but you never know when there's like a lot of people, um, a lot of people and like kind of a lot of intensity because I think it, we're going to be a little bit stressed out putting on this little thing that we've never done before, but um, I'll do as much as I can there. And, but I, I definitely will be bringing a couple of plants home and that, that much I know for sure. So I'll be showing you that. So yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. So it's now Sunday. Um, I'm just heading out to NST now. It's 11.30 and I'm aiming to get there just after 12. So basically today I'm there to grab some plants that I, I purchased. And Jing's gonna be there. Like I said, Charmaine's not gonna be there because she's still feeling really, really sick from her, her dental surgery. But the plan is to get the plants and then help with the live sale i don't know what my role is to be honest like i really don't know how this is gonna go i know that lauren would have planned it out and stuff but i'll just i, I guess i'll just do what i can um but i'm wearing my my ns t-shirt lauren made these shirts up for like all like the staff i just need to show you guys the best part can you see so she surprised us with these shirts and um yeah it's my new favorite shirt so I'll probably be there for like a few hours and I'll film a bit of like what's still available because basically I'm gonna arrive there at the very end of like the, the pop-up where it's open to the public and then we're gonna shut it down at two o'clock and then start prepping for the live sale. I'm, I'm actually really curious as to like how many plants are left over but I think this is this pop-up is like a really good really well thought out pop-up which is a little bit different than how um, other people would normally 
put on these events in that like Lauren hand selected a lot of the plants that are going to be at the pop-up because she likes she chose them from the live sales so she had a lot more control about over like what's coming in and like aligning that to what the local community wants and then doing this live sale so it's like kind of open up to the rest of Canada but anyways I'm just rambling now I need to get going so I will see you guys when I get there this is Jesse we could just he be is all the prop in a row. King. oh yeah you should be all in a row Anna. Oh, yes. Jesse's the prop king Jose's <laughs> security <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put in a picture of Anna in oh, the yeah. Mealybug costume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just Mealybug, Lauren the boss, she and then insert Ryland. Ryland, yeah, yeah, right the real boss. <laughs> okay, voiceover me is back. So I thought I'd just kind of walk you through the, the pop up and all the tables of plants on display because I think it'd just be interesting for you guys to see like where you are, um, what the prices are here, and just kind of see what what Lauren brought in essentially so she she brought a lot of Bessiers and Queens you'll see a lot more Queens this um Ulierum Don Burnsii there's two of them they they look different they have different um uh patterning on the leaves I think you can just see the two of them together here I didn't get one but I really wanted one um this is like Queen City Lauren got so many queens and they all sold out spoiler alert they all sold out I I don't know what's going on but people are liking queens again and then this is a box of philodendrons which people don't seem to be that interested in philodendrons anymore which which is kind of you know fair because they're quite easy to propagate and trade locally um this there's one lone longest simulobum left and do you remember when this was like over a thousand dollars so the price has dropped quite a lot el choco i wanted to just commemorate this one because i remember how incredibly excited i was when we first got our el chocos i think in 2020 or 2021 i think it was 2020 so many bti narrow forms and she picked these specifically as narrow forms um, for the small ones and these are considered seedlings and they were such a good price 60 dollars for like this size they all sold out as well she also got a bunch of bigger VTIs that were like regular form, not narrow form. Um, this is a Nigrolamnum Gigi. She got a couple in that were like very interesting and narrow. And then these are SP Alcoca, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later in more detail. But these were more expensive, but it's just Nigrolamnum Gigi, isn't it? And this is one of Lauren's um, Spiritus Sancti. She released one for sale. I don't know that it's sold or not in the live, but it might have. And this one is one of her Crystal Meg by Forgetty Eye by Lux, which was like very elongated and narrow, very pretty. And then just a bunch of her little homegrown seedlings. So there's like Crystal Megs, I think Meg Forgetty Eyes, Ace of Spade Megs. And this is Luxurian's table. These were handpicked by Lauren, so she picked like the darkest ones she could find. Look at this one. This one I was in love with. It's so perfect, and I find the bolations a little bit flatter and a little bit smaller, so it looked like a finer grain, which I'll talk about later. She also picked ones that were more narrow or what he would call sharp. I, I'm pretty sure every single one of these luxurians sold in the live. And then of course, two giveaway plants from Gilberto. So a giant queen and a giant king. Everyone say hi to Jing. Me? <laughs> hi Jing! Hi Jing! <laughs> Here's her stack of plants. What do you want to see first? Whatever you want to show. I guess this plant that's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Felix? Felix? Yeah. I don't know, I wanted I one for a really one. long time, but they were like really expensive. They were like $600, remember? It was fourteen hundred dollars, like oh at one Echo Genera pop up. Really? I thought you had one though. You no, know? I didn't buy one because it was too expensive. But this one, I think it was thirty bucks. I was like, I'm not gonna cry if it dies. Yeah. So. Okay. What did you end up rooting them in? Pearlite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think I should like cut them, or because it has so a lot of? I don't know if your stems doing it. They were going almost like. Brown, just like yeah, like this, like, part? This, like yeah, this? like it was like they were rotting from the top down. Weird. So I try, I did try to cut back to where I saw fresh, like good stem. This is green, but yeah. this is brown. Yeah. Okay. So I would almost Weird. cut it down. It even doesn't even look a like a difficult plant, but it does. Everybody but tell me they can't root this for some reason. And it mm. took two months in perlite before I saw roots. Oh, 
But I do like this, these leaves. Yeah, I know. It is super cute. But after seeing like Lauren's like <laughs> bin of dying <laughs> I'm kind of scared to own one. Have a new, uh, and it happened like just because it was the pop-up. Mm -hmm. And then mm. I got to the ones by, you know, a few days after mm. to pop them. Mm -hmm. And they, the roots were just rotting. rotting. The roots were rotted and then it was also rotting because it's like, it was new. It was rotting from the bottom and, and then the stem the bottom, yeah. yeah and the stem yeah it was the, on all of them so maybe they, maybe try do not like tree fern it? yeah maybe i don't know i don't know tree what you would like savior. i mean tree yeah. fern rooted my head around <laughs> everything it root okay i'm gonna put there for now it's all plants yes <laughs> Lichia is a little sad because the petio broke unfortunately the newest leaf it would have been US so nice. Really nice this is one of the live sale purchases so she like yeah. picked this one specifically too my vgi was supposed to be narrow but i don't think it's narrow so i wanted another one this mm. one does look really narrow if it was not broken yeah so sad but yeah they're, they're not difficult and thurium so probably will yeah i Tree, think there's some activated oh. roots Nice. Yeah, Great. which shouldn't be happening, but <laughs> it does happen. Okay, what else? Okay. And these are all live sale, right? Yeah, these are all live sale. Mm -hmm. I went in to just take a look and then bought six pounds. So. <laughs> oh, this is one live sale. <laughs> one one okay. live sale. This is. Um, CF when linger? Yeah, when supposedly. What did you labeled it as? I threw it out. Oh, okay. So it. I thought it looks really funny because all the small leaves are like this and there's one really fat leaf that's really funny looks like vegetable <laughs> it looks it looks a bit like um like a bird of paradise oh yeah it does <laughs> and also a little bit like um what's that one called super bum oh yeah yeah yeah, right? yeah yeah and then there's this leaf so it's really pretty though this I one's nice like, like the darkness I like the texture because the one I have is really flat. It has a mid rib, but like the leaf blade is really flat. Mm. And this one has a little bit more bullet, I guess. And you can yeah, see like the venation. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully it will grow more bigger leaves. Is this same like similar to what you guys have, or it's not the oh, texture it looks like this? Quite different. Mine, okay. mine is so thick. It feels like a hoya. Because mm. yeah. this one is kind of has a little shine to it, right? Yeah, it's mine is mine's pretty glossy. Oh yeah, and like you know how the leaf is super long. Mm -hmm. If I tilt it, it just it's just completely straight. It, there's no oh, bend. Oh, there's no bend, so mm -hmm. that's really thick. Yeah, because mine is, I think it's thicker than this, but it's also not as shiny or semi-gloss looking. Yeah, I wonder what it actually is. It could be just completely different. Yeah, but thing. it's still a really yeah. cute strap yeah. leaf, whatever it yeah. is. And I bought another queen. I my queen is way bigger than this, but every leaf come came out um, had a damaged tip. So like I have three leaves that's like half. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'll try another one. This one's I think it's the dark one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a good deal, right? Dark narrow, I think. Yeah, I think it was like thirty bucks too. Yeah. Frankie's crying. Frankie. Lunch time's over. No more potatoes. <laughs> so yeah, not much to say about this other than I just wanted to try another, another queen. queen and yeah. see if it grows better. I mean, I think it's also because the tent is so packed, it always grows into different plants and then it, it gets bent or it gets damaged in one corner and then it starts yeah, to like yeah, yeah. melt from there. And I think yeah. queens are like more prone to fungal stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then I have two luxuriants. They're pumping out luxuriants like yeah. crazy. So they look quite different. Yeah. This, this one was just labeled as, labeled as luxuriants. I think it was Shop just narrow, sharp narrow or something yeah. like that. And this was labeled as platinum. But looking yeah, at it, compare these two. it's not that silver. They both have silver. Mm -hmm. But this one's more cool toned, like bluish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this one is more yellow, you're mm -hmm. right. So that makes it three luxuries you have now? Yeah, I have one at home and just adding two. The okay. one at home is bigger. I want to contrast with another one. Wait, yeah. Was it this one? This one? 
I think like the, I thought it oh, it's dark like, just like maybe? the texture yeah if, if, if I tilt it like this the bolations mm -hmm. are smaller and closer together you know yeah. like it's like a smaller grain yeah like if you compare it to like this yeah and this is so black mm -hmm. this one is super pretty because these Ooh. older older hardened leaf right <laughs> yeah, like, well, so much sell. darker, right? This one was purchased as platinum, but that one is a lot more silvery, I would say. Yeah. But this, like, silver is pretty... It's pretty common on all the young But I actually right? just I thinking the old leaves... They're, the like, super silver. The, silver. Look at the bottom leaves. They're, like, silver. Yeah. I don't know. Do you remember when they first released these and it was, like... <laughs> actually silver like super bright and silver but this is actually really cute but it's just like a question of does it remain on the plant yeah well is it because it's small and then the next leaf is yeah because I, I don't know if on camera you can see it too but the newest leaf in person i think looks darker mm -hmm. than, yeah that's what i was saying this yeah. is the puff versus right? this yeah. and even on some of these that are not platinum if you look at their really little leaves they're quite silvery. You've studied all of these ingredients <laughs> closely. <laughs> well, because one time I ordered a bunch of them, they were just regular lots, but yeah. all their young leaves were very, they looked the same as the platinums that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think it might be a maturity thing or an immaturity thing. At least now they don't really differentiate the price that much, right? They no, I think, to. yeah. So that's everything, right? That's Jane? everything, yeah. I didn't know. Crazy amount of plants. No, Six you plants. forgot one. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who's wow. your supplier for your ZZs? Um, this one was from a local seller who liked to remain <laughs> anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a ZZ. Oh, no. Zenzi. Zenzi. I bought one last week at Vandula and it yeah. had like four stocks in it. So I was like, you're taking oh. one, and you're taking one. <laughs> and it looks so cute, like just by itself. You get a yeah. Zenzi and so you get yeah. Zenzi. Everyone gets Zenzi. <laughs> you just need a cute pot for it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to chill out for a second before the yeah. live sale. And as far as shipping, we're going to try and get them out tomorrow and Tuesday. So you can get them as soon as possible. And yes, you can pick up. So pick up, um, I can make available for pick up probably tomorrow at some point. Um, so pick up is an option. This first one is, and I'm here in Warwick, Manum, so it's $95 sold. <laughs> well, there's a lot of interest. Yeah, we'll do some yeah. more. So this one is another Warwick, Manum, and this code is P20. And this next one here is P12. Oh, there's Ashley. This is so exciting. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> you can't even bid on anything, and you're here. <laughs> so, and they're in luxuriance. And this one is $90. Going once. <laughs> Going twice. $90. In <laughs> my collection. Okay, sold. <laughs> oh, okay, sold. <laughs> Fine, take it. <laughs> and this one is $90. And it's so dark and delicious. Like, ugh. This one, the code is 113. $90. $90. Hey, somebody better take this. It's such yeah. a good one. I know. Oh, sold. Yay! <laughs> Going once. Going twice. Well, remember that Ooh, sold. <laughs> Vici Nero, $60. Look at the size of this. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. It's very narrow. And the code is P83.
my gosh. You guys, that was exhausting. That live sale, that went on for about two hours and it was more, it was longer than I thought it was gonna be. Um, and there was way more plants left over from the pop-up than I thought there would be, but I cannot believe how popular it was. Like a lot of plants sold that, that didn't sell at the pop-up. I think when I walked into the place and I was like, oh, there's quite a bit left over. And that was just like a really good idea. I think it's focusing on my steering wheel. Um, it was just a really good idea on Lauren's part to do this live sale. If you guys saw in the behind the scenes, like Jose, Anna, and Jesse were working so hard. And Jing for the first part, but Jing had to leave um, like halfway through. So the, it was just the behind the scenes part. So if you did actually join in on the live sale when we did it, let me know like what the experience was like for you because for me, for us, it was kind of confusing because when we're selling plants, there's like a 10 second lag. So we're like waiting to see if anyone claims it. And then um, we're, it feels a little bit awkward because you're not seeing it till 10 seconds later. And then we see like the claims coming in. Anyways, that was, that was an experience for sure. And now my feet really hurt because I'm wearing Birkenstocks and I have really flat feet. So the arch on the Birkenstocks hurts and now it's almost six o'clock i'm gonna head home um i picked up two plants so i'm gonna show you when i get home i'm gonna see how i feel um when i get home um i this might extend to tomorrow if i have the energy when i get home i might do it tonight but since they're potted up in that like tropicals like mossy mix in the pots i can just water them when i get home stick them in a bin and they'll be fine till tomorrow so i guess you'll find out when i get home <laughs> when i turn on the camera again but yeah that was a really fun day and i am starving so i'm gonna head home and i'll see you guys later okay we're back the lighting's a little bit intimate in here right now because i decided to turn off my grow lights just because it was like super blown out in the background but on the way home I was like oh I don't want to film I just want to like eat and like rest and zone out but I had to think um, on there's like sunshine coming in from the window and it's very odd to have actual sunshine coming in but anyways I was thinking ahead to the week and how much I actually have to do for work it's gonna be like a very intensive next three weeks three to three to four weeks every week leading up to my vacation at the end of june is going to be kind of intense i think so in the spirit of being responsible and clearing my schedule for work and just being able to do all my projects we're gonna close off this video so i'm just gonna show you the plants that i'm bringing back um not all of them are mine but jing handed me some plants that were also for charmaine because she couldn't make it and I live closer to Charmaine than Jing, and I don't know when I'm gonna see her again, but it's more likely than that um, I'll be able to get the plants to her. So I'm gonna show you those, and I'll show you at the end the two plants that I picked up, and then I'm just gonna like unwrap the roots and start the acclimation process. So from Jing, for Charmaine, not for me, there's this Alocasia Michaletsiana Maxkowskii, Maxkowskii. How do you say that? We've given up on this plant, me and Jing. Like I threw mine away. I find this green version so much more difficult than the variegated fried egg, but um, Charmaine decided she missed hers. So Jing's like, just take mine. So you can see that it's like probably been a little bit neglected. I don't know what's going on with this root situation and like why there's so much bare root stem at the top. But anyway, there's a bunch of little corn babies in here. Um, so that's gonna be going to Charmaine. So expect to see that on her channel in the near future. This sunshine is blowing me out. That's, yeah, that's, that's it. Well, there's these two plants, which I'm gonna unpack one. So just imagine this times two. Uh, Jing took cuttings of her Whipsalis micrantha, and I'm so excited to grow this. It's so cute. She says that it grows quite fast and it's quite easy. It's like a very flat, flat uh, Ripsalis and um, it has very much the same growth pattern as like Paradoxa or Paradoxa Minor. So I'm really excited to get this like rooted up in pond and then just growing, trailing off of my shelf with my other Ripsalis. 
So thank you, Jing, for this. I'm very excited for this. Um, and then the two plants that I picked up, I'm so excited to show these to you. So I picked them because not, I have these plants in theory, but these ones are a little bit more special and it'll make more sense when you see them. So the first one is, so I have, <laughs> my chin is just like white. Maybe if I go here, like, is this, nope, that's not any better. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right here. So I have an Anthurium Nigro Laminum GG or SP Napo, but there was this one at the pop-up, which looks quite a bit different. So this is the plant. Let me, let me actually grab you my original one just to compare. Okay, so this is my original. It suffered a little bit of underwatering, but this is kind of like a classic GG. Tall lobes, elongated, pretty narrow. I guess they don't always have to be narrow, but many of the ones you'll see for sale are quite narrow. Yeah, like leathery. But this one looks so wide. Oh my gosh, this freaking sunshine. But specifically, I got it because of like the lower leaves. Like look at this. Isn't that amazing? And this freaking Dorito, I was trying to think of what plant it resembled and Lauren was saying subsignatum, which yes, that's the one I was thinking of. So that like very wide um, butterfly lobes, almost like a Dorito. It would be a Dorito if it didn't like curve in here. Um, but this I thought was just incredible. And the new leaf is quite wide. I'd be very interested to see if I could get it to be like narrow and wingy again like that. Like this one is definitely my favorite leaf. But in terms of texture, it's very similar. I would say maybe, maybe my original Gigi is a little bit more like bumpy, a little bit more texture. This seems a little bit more smooth, but in terms of leaf thickness, it's the same. Um, and they're selling all these like kind of variations on Nigrolaminum GG, which kind of confused me. Like there was the El Coca, uh, which is a region I think in Ecuador. Jose was telling me about like three different ones and they're all named after the different localities, but they look like just the same plant. So I don't really understand the reasoning behind that. I didn't really do any research, but yeah, now I have two GGs. And then the other one I picked up, I this was love at first sight, honestly. So this one was labeled as a crystallinum silver. Look at that leaf. It's like so freaking silver and it's quite dark as well. I'm not a the huge sucker for like the very silver crystallinum, like hybrids or crystallinum um, selected cultivars. Like for example, Dorayaki or like crystallinum uh, or crystal hope. I'm not like, I like them, but I'm not like drooling over them. But this one I particularly liked because the silver is really bold, but it doesn't bleed out so much. So it's like pretty defined. And then um, in between, you see these like little flecks of silver like that. Like it's very reminiscent of like a, like a red crystallinum or something like that. You know how like they'll have little like kind of flecks of silver that makes it look a little bit messier and stuff. So I thought this one was just absolutely incredible so i'm so excited to get this and this one was 60 dollars. she has another one i saw that she kept for herself and that one was freaking amazing it's super bullate it has like so much bumpy texture to it very much the same like silver um venation but it's just got a little bit more 3d texture um so yeah that's my haul from the import, which I was not expecting to get, but I'm also extremely excited about. So I just wanna like get these unpotted, show you guys the roots. Um, and then I think what I'm gonna do is get them into water overnight. I found that a lot of the plants, especially the ones in the pots like this, were shipped quite dry. I don't know if it just, maybe it was packed earlier and it dried out and it was like, I don't know, whatever the reason, they came in a little bit drier than, than they usually do. So I think this is slightly dehydrated. So I'm gonna see what's going on, but I'm gonna get them into water overnight. You guys kind of know the drill if you've watched any of my import videos, it's always kind of the same thing. Although I don't normally do that water step, or no, not normally. I don't often do the water step if the plants are coming in looking pretty hydrated, pretty perky. And these aren't too bad, to be honest, but um, they seem a little bit more 
dehydrated than than usual so i would do that if the plant was coming in super droopy which often ha is the case for philodendrons because the root loss is just usually more severe than anthuriums with those like thick udon roots and like also hoyas like hoyas pretty much you're, you're if you're importing hoyas you're pretty much going to be rerooting them from scratch all right let's see what we're working with here let's do this one first because so this one seems less dehydrated <clears throat> I see, I see root rot already. Let's see. Oh yeah, lots of dead roots. Oh yeah. In terms of substrate, I was thinking either tree fern or pond, but um, I'm running a little low on pond, but my last uh, GG was was uh, acclimated in pond and it did quite well in that. I just, I don't know, I don't see why I wouldn't like tree fern. I have a bit more of that substrate, so I might do that. Hold on, let me get my scissors. All right, so here are the roots we're working with. You see like um, a lot of these like orangey looking roots, they're, they're on their way out. There are some okay looking roots. The chonk is fairly small like that big yeah a lot of roots but a lot of them are on their way out can you see like this orangey one up here if i just pull on it like you can see like it's smushing off at the end so we're gonna cut a lot of this off i find it really hard to talk and do this at the same time so i'm just gonna roll some music while i chop see this one just popped right off All right, just pulling some dried sheaths off. But I think this is uh, what I'm gonna keep for now in terms of the roots. There's a lot of like dead tissue here that I might wanna scrape up later, but um, not before I get it into the water soak for the day. Maybe a day or two, I'll just leave it in water. And I say a day or two because I don't know if I'm really realistically gonna get to it tomorrow. I might, um, I'm trying to be better about like not putting things off um, in terms of chores so what i ended up doing was pretty much chopping all of the secondary roots off i just saw another one here because there's just no point in keeping them in my opinion for the most part certainly for philodendrons for anthuriums it's usually not so bad like i remember last time i pretty much kept all the roots because they were just like pristine and white this time they didn't come in so hot so I cut off more than I than I um, did last time, but I think these might be workable. And sometimes when you do the water soak, that can help you kind of identify what's gonna go. So whatever like kind of rots off in the water, um, it's kind of easier. Or I could just get this straight into my rooting substrate, but I kind of, yeah, like I said, I just don't really have the energy to deal with it tonight. So it's going to do just fine in water overnight. In fact, it probably wants to rehydrate. Um, well, this one, this one seems fine. In the interest of like doing them all at the same time, I'm just going to put this one in, in water along with the other one because that, that one I'm almost 99% certain needs water. So let's pull them out. Roots, no, no, actually don't look as bad as the GG. This one actually not too bad. So maybe this plant is just a little bit thinner and like a thinner leaf than my other crystallinum. So this is kind of more similar to what my last, was this my last import? No, like my one of my imports from last year 
with tropicals. Very clean looking white roots. And I don't see any obvious signs of rot, which is not to say that the secondary roots are not going to be naturally shed by the plant and it, it'll just like start growing its own roots in the new substrate. But I think what I'll do is get this whole thing into water overnight, like I said, like a billion times. And then um, I'll do the cutting off of roots after it's had time to spend in water. But this is what this one looks like. Um, and then I also want to get this like this leaf kind of washed off even though it's not too dirty but I feel like I, there's like a little bit of a, a film I can get it maybe looking a little bit darker um, if I give it a nice wash but can we just talk about how beautiful this crystal is I freaking freaking love it I really hope that it's like gonna be an easy going one especially in lower humidity because I don't have tons of space in my tent anymore that's pretty much the extent of what I'm gonna do today I don't think that they need to be in a bin. I think these will just acclimate fine in my tent. Very, very happy with these two plants, especially this leaf. This leaf and this leaf are really what sold me on these two plants. All right, that's gonna do it for me for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoy this vlog and I hope you enjoyed the longer videos. Like I said, I'm gonna pin a comment um, that's gonna ask you guys for what your favorite types of videos are or just like any sort of suggestions on videos you wanna see. I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit anxious about how busy I'm gonna be in the next month. It's kind of brand new territory for me, I'm consulting. It's just uncharted territory for me in the sense that like it's not, it's not dictated by like a nine to five Monday to Friday work week. It's just like I need to schedule in the work um, when I when I can so all that is to say that um, I might have to do some shorter videos here and there and at the same time I need to like bulk up on extra content from when I I'm away in the UK also um, uh, as an aside if you have any suggestions on where we should be going in the UK I'm pretty sure we're only gonna stay within the UK we're not gonna go anywhere in the EU um, nor do we I don't think we can go to Ireland but outside of like London is a must because there's like friends in London we have to see and then Wales is a must like mostly like Cardiff and my stag obviously that's like where family is but outside of that I don't really know where I should visit if you have any suggestions on where or like must visit places and this is gonna be summertime too let me know I don't want to be in like big bustling cities and stuff. I just kind of want to be in like the scenic parts of the UK, if that makes sense. And I, cause I want to feel like rested and like it's a getaway or something. So yeah, let me know what your favorite parts are and um, where I should be going as we plan out our trip. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you did. I hope you have an awesome rest of your weekend and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.